Hey guys, Chris here for Two Months Guitars and Basses. In today's Guitar Tech Tips, I will walk you through all the main bass string types. In this series, I want to show you how to fix the most common issues and how to set up your guitars and basses without too many special tools. I'm really excited to have my good friend Julia playing the bass for us in this episode. Check out her awesome bass videos on the channel, I'll put the playlist in the description box. We'll cover the main bass string types, we'll talk about how they feel under the fingers and how they sound. Later on in the video, I'll talk about string gauges too. In case you enjoy Guitar Tech Tips, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like this video and ring the notification bell, thank you. You can get nearly all string types from all manufacturers. The first one today is nickel plated steel. These are the modern standard bass strings. They will have a well-balanced sound and a relatively silky feel. You'll find these strings on almost all new instruments when you try them out in a store or when you buy them. I will take nickel plated steel as standard and compare all the other strings to these ones in this video. Next one are coated strings. These are basically normal nickel plated steel strings, but with a protective coating. Thanks to this coating, they don't corrode that fast and they will sound fresh for a very long time. There are some cons too, they sound different. You will not get this fresh, metallic, snappy sound of non-coated strings with these. Truth be told, some really like this warmer tone, so it's just a matter of taste, as pretty much everything regarding strings anyhow. Next one, hardened strings. These will last longer than standard strings. Expect some more brightness, openness from the NYXLs compared to normal nickel plated steel. Pros, they last longer than normal strings and according to Julia, they feel normal to play, which is good if you're used to standard strings. Cons, well they're more expensive than standard strings and because they're not coated, they will not sound brand new throughout their lifetime. Next, cobalt strings. If you just cannot have enough output from your bass, these are the right ones for you. The combination of cobalt and iron will make it even more magnetic than steel and nickel, so your instrument will have more output. Cobalt strings have a scooped sound, a fast attack and a really bright sound. Pros, it's good for high gain players and for those who really want that punchy sound. Cons, it's not super cheap and it's probably not the best choice for players who prefer a subtle playing style and warm pleasant tones. Thank you. 
Next, stainless steel strings. These will have a bright sound, quite some low end and a little less output than nickel plated steel strings. They also feel a little more rough and sticky under the fingers compared to the standard nickel plated steel slinkies. Stainless steel is a good choice for players who want to tune lower because the strings don't get muddy and it's also awesome for those who want a lot of tonal clarity. Next, pure nickel strings. These will have a more mellow tone compared to nickel plated steel strings. Now don't get me wrong, they don't sound dull, it's just a subtle difference. They will also have a bit less bass and just altogether a less aggressive tone. These DR strings also have a round core, which means that unlike most modern strings, the core wire of the string is round instead of hexagonal. Hex core strings will be stiffer sound a bit brighter and will corrode a little faster thanks to air between the hex core and the wound wire around it. Round core strings will sound warmer, will have a little less attack and will last longer due to less corrosion. They also feel a little softer under the fingers thanks to this round core. Flat wound strings. If you're into warm and pleasant sounds, if you're a jazz, blues, Motown fan, you might enjoy flat wound strings a lot. Expect less volume and less presence compared to round wound strings. Next one, half rounds. These are semi-flat round strings, which sit obviously right between round and flat wound strings. These are a great choice if flat wounds are just a little bit too warm for your taste. Feel-wise, these Dadarios are a little stickier than the normal nickel plated steel earnable slinkies. There are people with nickel and steel allergy. Worry not, you can also play gold strings. This one, for example, is safe to use if you can't use the standard strings or if you're looking for something exotic. The tone is a little warmer than nickel plated steel strings and it feels a little bit stickier too.
All right, string gauges. This is probably the most subjective part of this whole topic. Everyone prefers something else and there is no right or wrong. Standard string gauges for basses are 40s or 45s, which refers to the thickness of the G string in inches, which is gonna be then 0.040 or 0.045. Which string gauges will work for lower tunings? Well, it depends on two things. First of all, the bass's scale length, and second of all, the player's attitude. As a rule of thumb, you can start with one gauge higher per one full step lower tuning. So if you play 45 to 100 in E standard, try 50 to 105 for D standard, and 50 to 110, or maybe even 55 to 110 for C standard. This will most probably need some extra tweaking, but it's a good starting point. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions left. I'd also love to know what you wanna see in this series. Don't be afraid of setting up and fixing your guitar or bass. It's time to become your own guitar tech. Look at my fingers, only, only look at my fingers. <laughs> hey, don't look at my cheat boards. Oh, no.